In today's video, I'm going to talk about the channel batch export function in Cubase. Okay, so first things first, we're going to describe why we want to use batch export. Then I'm going to describe how to use it and how it's done. We're also going to implement like a little bit of a test to see what goes on in the export function. So why would you want to batch export in the first place? Well, number one, sometimes you want to export stems. Uh, there might be a number of different reasons. Maybe you have an instrument with MIDI and you just want to batch export all of that MIDI and have audio files and then import that into a separate project or the same project. Now, what I have here is a project with many different variations. So this here is a simple MIDI track. It's triggering the uh, VST instrument, which is Groove Agent here. This has three separate audio outputs and all of these audio outputs, which is built into the instrument, are going into the drums group bus and the drums group bus is going to the master channel of the project. This here is an audio track that's going into the drums bus into the master and this is a separate MIDI track triggering Groove Agent and its own track here uh, which is rooted into the drums. So on their own we'll solo all the drums They sound nice and clean. Uh, one thing when you're exporting is it's not clear whether or not it's processing whatever is on the separate channel here or whether or not uh, it's processing what's on the master channel. So what I've done is I've added a phaser plug in here so we can hear, we can clearly hear the difference. That's with the phaser plugin on. So we're going to leave it. We're going to batch export all of these different things here to get a sense of what happens during the batch export section. So we go into file and into the export audio mix down. And this has to be checked off. Otherwise, you're only selecting a single output bus to render. Uh, then you want to select whichever channels you want. So I've pre-selected that. We have kick, shakers, toms. These are all coming from the VST instrument, which are then routed into the drum loop, or sorry, the, into the drums group, which is up here. Uh, I've also selected the entire drums group. I've selected the drum loop audio track and the hats audio track. And I've selected a folder here. Uh, we're going to call it, let's just call it Antoku for funds. Uh, into a WAV file, however you want to export it. Hit the export button. So now it's done and we're going to do a little bit of testing to see what's, what's exported. So this is the drums here with the phaser on the master bus. When we go into our drums bus export, we can clearly see that it's not using processing from the master track. It's, it's basically taking a snapshot before the audio reaches the master output bus. Uh, the other thing we're going to try here is all the separate different tracks. So we have the kick, clearly just the kick, toms, drum loop, hats, all in their separate audio files. And again, it's taking the snapshot from the track itself. So it's not taking information from further on down the audio chain. Now, the other thing I want to try, which we'll demonstrate, is to make sure that everything else, let's say we have our effects tracks here. So if we're sending it to the external effects track, which is a reverb, quite a lot. We're going to take the phaser off because we don't need to test that anymore. But we have a big reverb. So way too much reverb. And then on the drums track, we're going to 
put a crazy delay on here. <laughs> so much feedback. <laughs> okay, we're not doing the, the ping pong delay. We're gonna do a, sim a simple stereo delay trick here where we go not in, oh, it was a one delay time, no wonder. Uh, we'll go to a eight millisecond delay with no feedback, no filters, and 100% mix. So you can see how much wider that is. That's a, a simple stereo spread trick with a delay. Snares is probably the dead giveaway where it's the most widest. So, <laughs> the most widest. So my hypothesis is because it's taking a snapshot from that track itself, and the send effect is on its own separate track, therefore it's not gonna take that input into account. So there's gonna be no reverb, and there's gonna be the stereo delay. All right, there you go. So it has that wide stereo delay plugin. It includes that, but not any send effect, not any further audio processing that is down the chain, such as the stereo output or master output bus uh, and yeah so this is like I mentioned there's various different reasons why you would want to export in such a way uh, having that feature built into Cubase is a pretty fantastic thing and shout outs to Defunk73 uh, they asked me to do a video like such so I go I went ahead and did a little bit of research played around and and uh, put this one together so if you have any questions or random video ideas, then certainly feel free to, to write in the comments in any video, basically. Uh, you could also email me. But yeah, send me any of your video ideas. If to me it makes sense, there's a lot of value in putting the time and effort into making a video and then sharing it on the channel, I'll certainly do that. All right, so that's it. Thank you, take care, and bye-bye.